The country of Great Britain is a railway country with a history that spans the course of 150 years with many stories to tell. These are the stories of the men, women and steam locomotives who worked and served under the almighty power which was British Railways. A time of innovation, motivation and change for the men, women, their work and the steam locomotives and their services. These are the stories of the locomotives and their crews who worked hard under the threat of their lines closing, their jobs changing and simply replacement, whilst keeping their spirits high through their adventures. These are the stories of the locomotives of British Railways. Episode 3, Quite a Q1 Oliver Bullard was the last Chief Mechanical Engineer for the Southern Railway before nationalisation. An impatient genius, his designs are some of the most advanced steam locomotives ever built in British history. All of his designs had many new recognisable features. An air smooth casing made out of steel box pox American style wheels, a firebox made of steel instead of copper, and a chain driven valve gear contained in a 40 gallon oil bath. All of which are features that can be found on most of his designs. Starting from the Merchant Navy Pacifics, the West Countries and Battle of Britain Light Pacifics, all unique all beautiful and much talked about machines. Along with various other prototypes of engines using different kinds of fuel sources and even a bizarre carriage like steam engine. But it is his first three designs that get the most credit. Apart from one other class of steam locomotive. These were the most powerful class of 060 tender engines ever built. The Q1s were designed and built during wartime, out of bog standard parts which can be made and assembled quickly and easily giving these freight engines a rather odd appearance, which earned them the nickname Ugly Ducklings. And one of these ducklings had recently been allocated to Brighton Shed. The engine's name was Oliver and he was going to handle most of the goods trains coming in and out of Brighton Station, the yards as well as various other places along the line. But before he could, the works needed to make sure that he was in full working order before he could start work. Oliver, as an engine, was rather shy and was worried about socialising with the other engines, especially the ones who thought of him as strange and looked down on him in disgust. And you can guess who was the first engine to do so. Well, this is a bit of an odd one. And make no mistake about it. And what do you mean by that, Sako? Well, this engine's a bit of a... Uh, antisocial. I suppose it makes it difficult for him to make friends when he looks like that. And yes, I guess he didn't choose to be built that way, but when you look at that engine, you say to yourself, I wonder what Mr. Bullard was drinking when he came up with a shape like that. Oh, come on, that's rather shallow of you to say, Sir Kay. Too right, Nicholas. Of all the things you can change on an engine, attitude, 
temperament, and even stature, and you comment on the looks. That is shallow even for you. It is not shallow at all, I am just stating out the obvious, and for that reason I feel rather sorry for the poor engine as he hasn't spoken to anyone since he arrived at the shed, which gets me rather concerned about what kind of engine he is, personality wise. With an engine like that, you can't help but be cautious. Don't be so serious, okay? There's no need to be cautious at all. He is an engine just like you and me. He's probably a very nice engine. He just needs to find his place in the shed, that's all. I think all he needs is just some friends. I'll go and talk to him, and introduce myself. Tulu. You see, that's how you do it. I just get my wheels moving and be a nice engine, which you, Sir K, know nothing about. Nicholas rolled up alongside the Q1 and introduced himself. Hello there. Oliver looked rather nervous. He hadn't expected anyone to come up and talk to him, and began to stutter. <laughs> don't worry, my dear chap. You don't have to worry yourself. I'm not here to hurt you or insult you. I just wanted to say hello. Oh, oh, really? Um, oh, that's, that's good. I, um, uh, oh dear, I'm, uh, I, I'm Oliver. Oliver? The name of your designer? That's a fine name. I'm very pleased to see an engine like you at our shed. Oh, oh are you? Um, well, I, I do like the look of the shed, but, um, a new surrounding place can be a, a bit d d daunting. <laughs> yes, indeed, that is true. But you'll be alright here, Oliver. Most of the engines here are usually friendly and accepting of your arrivals. Where did you come from? Oh, um, Eastley, mainly. Uh, uh, I was allocated in the last, um, um during the, um, the war. I see. And why exactly did you move here? Um, work with the, the g good traffics, I think. Oh, gosh, uh, so many, um, g questions. It's okay, it's okay. I understand you probably had a bad experience over there. And if you don't want to talk about it, it's perfectly alright. But if you ever want to talk, you can always come and find me. Nicholas's reassuring smile was enough to give Oliver a slight smile back. I've got to go and collect my next tray now. But I'll be back tonight. Just give me a whistle if you want to talk. Oh. Thank you. Um, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't, uh, I didn't catch your name. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. No need to apologize, Master Oliver. Nicholas. My name is Nicholas, and it's an absolute pleasure to meet you, Oliver. The old engine whistled and puffed towards the station. A few hours after Oliver and Nicholas' conversation, Johnny rolled into the yards, shunting some milk tankers into the siding next to Oliver. But he wasn't coupled up to the tankers. So as he slowed down, the wagons rolled forward, hitting the buffers with a loud bash. Oliver jerked. He was very surprised by the noise. Oh, are you okay? Oliver, isn't it? I'm so sorry I startled you, mate. The wagon's just sort of... I am not startled! Oh, 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 oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, I, 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 I'm so sorry, uh, two, two, two squadron. Um, um, oh dear, I'm, um, I, I'm sorry. It's okay. My name is Johnny. Why are you acting like this, Oliver? Is everything okay? Is there anything I can do? Oliver considered what he was about to say. He had only just met this engine, but he was trying to be friendly. And this is an engine who was designed by the same man as him. So Oliver took a deep breath and spoke. Uh, there is, uh, is something wrong. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm always nervous when coming to a new place and meeting new engines. It, 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 it's why, uh, oh dear. Why is that? Don't worry, Oliver. You can trust me. I won't laugh or insult you. I'm not like that. Besides, 
us bullet engines can always count on each other, no matter if we pull goods or passenger trains. You, 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 you promise? Absolutely, Oliver. And so, Oliver explained everything about himself. His past, and why he acts the way he does. Johnny was astounded by the time Oliver had finished. He gave a reassuring wink to Oliver, and Oliver smiled back. A little later that night, Johnny backed down onto the shed next to Nicholas, talking to Sir Kay, whom of which was talking very loudly. Standing beside him was his crew, talking to the Yardmaster. I am not going to do it! I am not going to lower it down to the ranks of good work! Sir Kay, calm yourself. The Yardmaster said that all other goods engines are either indisposed or are busy elsewhere. You need to have more flexibility and some patience. P -p patience patience That new goods engine should have got to work by now. Apparently, he is just what we need for the goods work, but he has done absolutely nothing. What is all this fuss about then? There is a goods train of vans and other wagons that needs to be taken to Ashford tomorrow. But unfortunately, there are no other engines available, so the Yardmaster came down here to ask Sir Kay. But he thinks that taking goods trains is beneath him. Of course it's beneath me! I am an express engine! You cannot see the likes of me pulling dirty stock, such as those vans. Have you seen the size of that train? There's bound to be more trucks added to it by tomorrow. I don't see why that thing over there can't take it to himself. There is a reason for that. Not only hasn't the running foreman finalised the paperwork for his allocation yet, but he is also... A danger to the rails. I heard you speak to him earlier on that siding over there. The engine was babbling right in front of him. What on earth is the matter with him? It's, it's like he's... Traumatised. Excuse me? Johnny decided to choose his words carefully as he thought back to his earlier conversation with Oliver. That Q1 has been through a lot. When he was built, Britain was under constant threat of invasion, as you well know. Not only did he have to carry tons and tons of ammunition, but rations to the troops. He probably had to bring home the injured and damaged after fighting the Germans. And like the B-12s and the LNER, who took the hospital trains as well as the ATFs, carrying all those weapons, some of which were built at Brighton Works. And they're not the only ones. There were so many engines during the Second World War that had to carry out these tasks. And Oliver, he was probably responsible for half of that, along with the rest of his brothers and sisters as well. Well said, Johnny. That is what's stopping this engine from running. Yes, he's a nervous wreck, but even nervous wrecks with good intentions can work hard. But he has had to combat his personal demons on a daily basis. That is something you've got to understand, Sir Kay. But I don't understand. If the facts you're presenting to me are indeed true, then how come a lot of Q1s I have met don't suffer from the same problem? Well, some engines are better at dealing with trauma and war than others. Oliver must have difficulty with that. I'm sorry, but that doesn't ring true. If he was that traumatised, then he would be in a worse situation. Like you said, he wants to work, but clearly that is not the case. His boiler has clearly been dropped in the workshops whilst he was being built or something, because what that looks like is a young pair of lazy wheels. Oh come on, that's shallow even for you, Sir Kay. Lazy wheels is the kind of insult used by young tank engines to annoy bigger engines. At the very least, I would have thought you had standards. I do have standards, 222 Squadron. I am just merely stating facts. That's until this engine turns a wheel and proves himself and explains himself, then I am not going to believe that he is any use whatsoever. He doesn't even look all that powerful. I'm warning you, that's not the way to go, Dance, okay? If you take this attitude towards Oliver, you'll feel very embarrassed later on if he proves you wrong. If he does. Emphasis on the if, my dear Nicholas. And if he does, which I highly doubt he will, I will believe in him. And that should be incentive enough to pull this train tomorrow. Because once again, I will not pull freight trains! Sir Kay then rolled into the shed feeling quite content for himself. But unfortunately, Johnny wasn't. 
As for Nicholas, he just looked out of the shed, feeling very sorry for the goods engine, because Oliver had heard the entire conversation. Sir Kay's opinions had really hurt his feelings.